Does your turntable spin at the right speed? And how can you be sure? Well, pour yourself a dram of your favorite scotch, and let's dig into the problem. Cheers. Peaty. So peaty. I love it. Many of you will have a turntable something like this. It has a strobe indicator of the speed. So this is simple enough. Turn on the turntable and observe the strobe. And this has markings both for 50 hertz and 60 hertz. So we observe the correct band here and we note whether the dots are moving or not. And if they're standing still, then the speed is correct. And if it needs correction, then we can use the pitch control to either speed it up or slow it down. But we want it to be standing still. One question you might have is, what's going on when I see it move side to side just a little bit here and there. That is most likely fluctuations ever so slightly in the 60 hertz or 50 hertz, depending on where you live, of your mains power. Since this type of turntable runs on a DC motor. Now, Say you don't have something like that. If you don't have one of these sorts of indicators on your turntable, you can print out or buy a piece of paper, cardboard, that goes on your turntable that you can then hold a light with the right, I guess a fluorescent light typically, and see that way. What I typically do is I use an app on a smartphone and the app is called RPM Speed and Wow. So here I've just got a piece of PVC for a spacer here. Set this down there in the middle. Hit start and start my turntable. And it measures for a period of time and then reports back. And in this case, it says that the speed is 33.30, not 33.33. However, the strobe indicator says that we're right on target. So what's up with that? Well, let's try speeding it up just a little bit. Speed it up just a smidgen. Now it looks like the dots are creeping forward. Let's try this again, see if this tells us something different this time. Okay, so it looks like we overshot, and it is saying, according to the strobe here, that it's also fast. Hmm, all right. So, according to this, we've nailed it now. And we can see that it's a little bit hard to tell from the strobe the very fine gradations of the speed. Now I do have another turntable that has a quartz lock mechanism. And with that, I set the timing of that quartz with an oscilloscope. And so that should be super accurate. 
But now that we've got it going at 33 and a third, according to this and according to this, should I believe it? Are they accurate? How do we know? Let's find out. For this we'll need sound. The record I have on the turntable is called an audio obstacle course, otherwise known as the trackability test record TTR 101 for stereo cartridges produced by Shure. I was lucky enough to find this copy at my local Goodwill. Go figure. It has a number of useful features, including the first track on side two has one kilohertz tones. I have here again a smartphone. It has an app, in this case called Tuner Pitched. I can play the one kilohertz tone on here and measure it through the speakers here to see whether this says that it's indeed one kilohertz. So let's check it out. Left channel, standard recording level, velocity 5 centimeters per second, frequency 1000 cycles per second, left channel. Right channel, standard recording level, velocity 5 centimeters per second. Frequency 1000 cycles per second, right channel. Balance test. Well, I'd better stop that before I start getting complaints in the house. Um, so, what this said is that that was about 1,010, give or take a couple of hertz here and there, about 1,010 hertz, which is within 1%, but should be better than that. So this is saying that this is now a bit fast. So maybe I need to take another look at the strobe here because I, according to this, it was exactly 33.33. According to the tone over the speakers and measured again by this, it was a little bit fast. Hmm. Try again. Left channel, standard recording level, velocity 5 centimeters per second, frequency 1000 cycles per second, left channel. Right channel, standard recording level, velocity 5 centimeters per second, frequency 1000 cycles per second, right channel. Hmm. Balance test. Barely any change. So do I trust this? Do I trust that? Which app on here do I trust? Well, I know what I do trust. I trust a fluke. Let's check this out. For this I'm going to want to turn off the power amp, but leave on the preamp, because I'm going to use these cables right here with my oscilloscope to see what frequency is being fed to my amplifier.
All right, let's try this again with the fluke. Interesting. Well, the good news is that the app on the phone appears to be pretty spot on. In other words, I was getting about 1,009 hertz on each of these channels for each of these tests. And that's the same that I was getting on the phone. So that's good. The phone is an accurate tester. We don't need a fluke. That's a relief. However, still need to figure out exactly how to get that turntable speed exactly right. Let's see if I can get this tuned in just right with the pitch control. Left channel, standard recording level, velocity 5 centimeters per second, frequency 1000 cycles per second, left channel. Right channel, standard recording level, velocity 5 centimeters per second, frequency 1000 cycles per second, right channel. Balance test. Adjust the balance control until the notes are equally loud from each one speaker. So that's pretty close. It does fluctuate a little bit during the tone. And now, according to the strobe, it's slow. So that's pretty interesting. I'm not sure which to believe, really. Well, no, I take that back. I believe the fluke. Do I believe the record? Oh boy. Well, when in doubt, take a sip of scotch. Because uh, I'm just not likely to leave that so that it looks like it's going slow. I just can't do it. But maybe I should. I mean, I guess I actually should. I've done about the most careful calibration that can be done right now. Hmm. All right, I'm down here to check out the PL630. It has no strobe because it has quartz timing. And let's check it out. Okay, so according to this app, 33.25 RPM, so according to this app, it's slow. Not a huge amount, minus 0.26%. Okay, time to try the audio obstacle course record. What's out here? So this one also coming up sharp, about 1%. So I'm beginning to doubt the friggin' record, because I have calibrated this friggin' quartz timing with a scope. It's just fucking gotta be right. Well, at least I've got the scotch. Well, what did we learn other than stay with the scotch?
Okay. What about the friggin' record? It doesn't say what sort of potential inaccuracy or imprecision there might be in the frequency of that tone. And the name of the track is essentially like a balance and phasing. So it's not claiming to be a tone for calibrating pitch. So if it's not claiming to be a tone for calibrating pitch, then perhaps I shouldn't be using it to calibrate pitch. And perhaps then I ought to stick with the other metrics. The RPM app, and it seems to be in pretty good agreement with the strobe here. Um, not in perfect agreement with the quartz locking on the turntable downstairs. What do I think about that? I don't know. It's not a big difference. Uh, I mean, I'd have to go back through the service manual and the procedure for that I followed in calibrating that quartz locking. My recollection is just that it was pretty friggin' bang on um, according to the scope when I did so. So, leads me to potentially distrust the app a little bit. I don't know. Here's the bottom line though. The scotch is good. Okay, that's one bottom line. The, the second bottom line is these are small differences that maybe you might notice, but probably not. If the tone on the record is exactly one kilohertz, no more, no less, then, you know, we're still talking, you know, maybe a 1% error in speed, in pitch, so on. I think it's probably the record, honestly, because looking at the tone from time to time on the record does vary a bit. That could be my turntable's wonky. But no, no, I don't think so. I think it's it was actually increasing in frequency a very small amount as it went on. So it could be off. And that would be nice because it doesn't agree with any of the other measurements that I've got. Well, I hope you at least Learn some ways that you can calibrate the speed of your turntable. Because, you know, it's rather important that it be uh, at least about right. And I like to get it exactly right, if I can. You may ask, what do I personally use most often? Well, when I'm working on turntables, I use the phone app. It's easy. It seems accurate enough, and uh, yeah, it's, you know, it gives me friggin' four significant figures, supposedly, so that's pretty good, and um, yeah, if lacking a strobe, that's what I use, so I hope this video has been somewhat instructive at least, if you learn nothing else, Stay with the single malt. Cheers, everybody. Have a great one.